<laughs> way too early in the morning for this. But I know you guys are wondering, are we going to have a Tech Tuesday segment today? Uh, so, are we having a Tech Tuesday today? Probably not. No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor. Real of the seats. With 505 mash, you can't be beat. I got a brand new Corvette, baby. My girl's a Z06 Chevrolet. Mmm, gonna let it loose, man. My Corvette's number one. Okay, a couple things I want to address real quick before we get started on our Tech Tuesday. Chuck and I giving you some tips and uh, some feedback on how to fix or how to operate your Corvette. Thanks for joining us. We're a little bit later than I anticipated, even though I teased about it earlier. It wasn't his fault this time. I took some of your happy pills. <laughs> and I needed them to wear off. Uh-huh. I... Hey, the winner of the hat contest yesterday is Thomas Coville, and the correct answer was eight tries it took me to throw the hat and land on the camera. Although I've not heard from, uh, not heard from the guys at Dude Perfect. I'm still waiting for that. I'd love to be in one of those videos, man. I'd have so much fun. Oh my gosh. Oh, and last week I told you guys I was going to re-air a tip today, especially for Ernie, and we'll talk more about Ernie here in just a moment. He's actually going to Nelson Ledges here in Ohio tomorrow to race his Elkhart Lake Blue C8. Now, for those of you that do like a little weekend, a little spirited driving, and you don't have a three-point harness, take it from Bobby in Texas. Here's how you can really cinch that seat belt and hold yourself in the seat, which is exactly what you need to do if you're on track okay so what we do is of course you want to get your hands on the wheel so you have a real your your elbows here at a 90 degree angle of course i'm not doing that right this second but what you'll do is you'll put your seat belt on then you'll pull it all the way out okay and then you'll let it ratchet up and then what it does is it it, it it's, it's where you can't move and you'll move your seat up just a little bit and now, then and then you're you're locked into the seat that was really move. holding you in the seat yeah how many of these you hand me Dude, that's not all of them. I still got a whole full of them. That's why I say we do as many as we can each week. See what I gotta go through? <laughs> just like that. Yeah, just, just like that. Oh, also last week too, Chuck showed us real quick how to take a car out of transport mode. Here's how you do that. This car is in transport mode. So what does that mean when it's in transport mode? Transport mode means it cuts part of the electricity to the car to protect the battery. Okay. We want to take it out of transport mode? Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing this for. Okay, shut the car off. <laughs> oh, shut the car off? Okay. You want to turn the hazards on. Now, when you push the button to start it, hold the button. Do I keep my foot on the brake or no? Well, you can, don't matter. Just hold, but turn it on and just keep holding it? Keep holding it. Okay. Keep holding. Just keep holding it. Okay. Sorry, you guys can't see. Keep holding it, it ain't went out yet. Okay, how do you know? There it is. Oh, now Transport it's off. mode off. Now, since that video, a lot of you have texted and emailed and commented on the YouTube channel. People are asking, can you put a car, because you're talking about reducing the power for storage and what have you, people are saying, well, oh, is that the case? Can I put my car in transport mode if I'm gonna store it? Yeah. Well, how do you do that? The opposite of the way you took it out. Okay. <laughs> Okay. When it's out of transport mode, you turn the four ways on, hit the brake, hold the start switch, hold it, hold it, hold it. It should go back into transport okay, mode. Okay, it'll come back and say transport mode on. Yeah. So that helps, but then does it, I mean, you still have power to the car, so then right. I mean, you would still want to have it plugged in using a battery tender or something of that yes. nature, but that's still going to reduce the power a little bit. And come next spring, don't forget when you fire it up, oh my God, my on there, lights flash, what? Yes, because it's in transport mode. Take it back out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so hopefully that answers a lot of questions for you guys. Uh, some folks I just talked to recently, I've uh, been hanging in like a lot of you and their C8 just got built. Uh, first, uh, Jeff and Irene in California, and I was talking to you last night, and they said, thank you for what you and I do on the channel. Uh, they're really enjoying the daily uploads. He gets up every day, he's like, hey, is there an upload? Is there an upload? You know? <laughs> Been here since 6.30, man. I'm toast already. Right. Long day to go. But he says, I would love to give you and Chuck a group hug. So <laughs> Appreciate I'm, it. I'm not hugging you, so don't, yeah, even, don't even get any ideas. Six feet. All right. And then, and then Jeff, he was so excited about his car being made, he posted this on the channel. And this is a great analogy when you're talking about your car being made or born. Uh, he says, uh, just to let everybody know, at approximately 1.37 p.m. Pacific time, August 13th, we welcomed Franny into the world. Let's call this fat Franny. <laughs> 
She weighs 3,647 pounds <laughs> and is 182.3 inches long. Hell yeah, he says. And for those of you that didn't know, those are the specs for the C8 Coupe. <laughs> Congratulations on your very big baby. <laughs> uh, and before we start reading some of your uh, questions for our Q&A here on Tech Tuesday, I want to address this. Uh, he actually called me yesterday and was surprised I was going to talk about it. Uh, we mentioned Ernie's going to go to Nelson Ledges here in Ohio and race his car. We talked about Ernie last week, and he was supposed, well, he actually did go to mid Ohio because he had hit the 1500 miles. Uh, he was having you know all kinds of stuff done to the car that we were waiting on, accessories. Went to another dealership and had the two extra quarts of transmission fluid added. The first lap or first session out, um, that's all he got because he started getting bells and whistles and all kinds of stuff going off on the dash. And uh, lo and behold, it was uh, either three or four all on one side. The spark plug wires were loose and they were throwing all kinds of crazy oh, yeah, stuff yeah, on the yeah, car. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. And he didn't know what was going on. Thank goodness that's all it was. But I mean, uh, I mean, it's nothing that you would have seen. I mean, I don't know if you have to include that in your PDI now. Do you got to push down to make sure that they're on the well, spark plug, I, I, for goodness I sakes? Probably will, just like when, you know, the C7s come out, we had to make sure we checked the rear diff fluid because yes. they was blowing up all over the country. Not that we didn't prior, but we right. really had to make sure. So yeah, so, yeah, I will include that in the PDI inspection from now on because yeah. they're easier for me to access when the car's in the air. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, sorry about that, Ernie, but thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, that is all that was uh, wrong with the car. Uh, when he goes to Nelson Ledges tomorrow, hopefully get some PDR footage that we can share in a very soon upcoming vlog. Okay, so we do have a lot to get to, and uh, thanks again for watching here, guys. You want to go ahead and start? Because you got a pile over there, brother. Sure. This comes from Jeff. Love your vlog, vlogs and finally wanted to submit a question. What are Chuck's thoughts on installing radiator grills on the C8 like the attached? Uh, well, I didn't see the attached. I'll insert a picture here. Yeah, I have seen a lot of issues with the fins, radiators getting damaged with very little miles. My concern is airflow with installing the grills, but as the fins get bent over, it will reduce, reduce airflow anyway. Yeah, you know, I kind of wondered that myself about the C8s when I seen them. Uh, I don't know what kind of aftermarket grills that they're offering. For, yeah, to it's, put like, it's in. like a screen essentially that's going behind that grill opening there, the two big right. openings down there. Uh, and the one that you saw there, the guy has it in, in color, and number one, I don't know if I'm real hip to the, the color thing. I think it's a distraction to the to the flow of the, of the lines of the car, but right. without it, yeah, you're seeing a lot of debris because those openings in the grill itself are, are this big, for goodness sake, so a lot of crap is, is getting in there. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm sure it is. Uh, Rick and Chuck, got a question for your Tech Tuesday on a popular Corvette forum. I've read numerous posts, okay, we've talked about this before, I've read numerous posts about the leather dashes on C7 3LTs having serious issues as far as bubbling, delaminating, things like that, and what is this? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening is because that is wrapped over an existing dash, and depending on, um, I don't know for sure, but I would have to say, depending on weather conditions or if it's sitting out in the sun a lot, I know early on when they were testing, um, and this is you know some some Intel stuff that they have, but they were testing some of the new uh, colors. They were keeping them out in the sun to see how they were fading and how they were you know weathering and things like that. So with that 3LT and that Napa leather, yeah, you're going to have that situation. Um, you got to be careful. You, you got to be very careful with that. Uh, even some of the roofs, and it has nothing to do with your question, but some of the roof you'll watch some of the DLAM of the uh, the interior liners, and you've had right. to re-glue them with a different glue. So. That's kind of what you're running into, and unfortunately, there's not really a fix for that. When you have the bubbling and DLAM, uh, you've got to you've got to replace the dash, and hopefully, maybe it's in an area that can be replaced just that part. But if it's up on the dash in the windshield, then yeah, man, that's that's a dash. That's a whole dash. All right, dude. I got one here from Paul. It says I know you addressed this somewhat last last Tuesday in Bill's question. But I've still got a concern about my eight-speed automatic transmission. I have a 2016 1LT Stingray with 5,100 miles on it. I know I just don't get to drive it as much as I like. Uh, let's see. In my driving experience on city streets, I'm always jumping from four-cylinder eight, four, eight-cylinder mode. I've decided recently to just drive the car in manual mode with the hopes of not having a problem down the road. Can you give me any advice? 
yeah like we said earlier you can drive it in manual mode it'll kind of keep it prevent it from going into four cylinder mode the only thing you're really going to see is just a little bit reduced fuel economy thanks again for watching and thanks for the question here's one from jerry in las vegas rick a question for your tech tuesday sessions i read on the corvette forums there are several c8 owners that have experienced the front hood opening while driving gm responded um, and Chevrolet said this must be user error. Seems questionable. What is your take on the situation? No, no comment. comment. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta give them more than no comment. <laughs> I just think it's ironic that after that situation started popping up, no pun intended, um, that there was a recall for the reprogram of a button if someone's stuck inside the front. Right. Which I try to get inside the front. Trunk in the front. Wow. You could see there that I didn't fit. So who's getting in there? Yeah. I don't know. I just and just you know, and I, I'm hoping that that programming issue has helped. Uh, I know that there's a chime to alert you if it's open. Um, if your radio's cranked up or you're talking, the chime is not loud enough. You may control your chime to get it down to the lowest point. It can't turn it all the way off, but you can get it down to the lowest point, and maybe you can't hear that or see. Uh, on the right hand side of your dash it says that the hood is open so uh, I, I don't know I've not had anybody where it's happened to them yet I've had one customer that it did happen but he admitted he says it was my fault I know I left it open and I didn't realize it till I started driving by the time he did see the thing on the on the dash it whoosh and it was it was game over so it's a bummer so I don't really have any more to comment right now um, which is unusual for us but uh, <laughs> more to come all right buddy you're up all right, this one comes from Art. He says, first, thanks, Chuck, for your response on my AC and interior heat issue question. By the way, I had my dealer check the AC system, and they could not find anything wrong with it. However, since they checked the system, the AC has worked better. Go figure. Well, I go figure. You say it's a 2019 Grand Sport. The only thing I can figure is it might have had just not quite enough charge from the factory and they probably did an AC and analyst on it which is evacuating it down and recharging it now it has a full charge and that's probably why it's probably working better oh fantastic did not a leak or anything just didn't get a full enough charge from the factory just need a little kick in the butt yeah and he says my second question is dealing with the flushing of the brake fluid uh, Saturday oh it said on the lot for I think a it's, year oh, that one sat for a year right yeah right. Would you recommend flushing and replacing the brake fluid two years from production, two years from purchase, three years, etc.? What impact, if any, on the brake fluid does sitting on a dealership lot have for a year? Did he say what transmission that was? No. Because remember, they're different. Right, they are different. Um, whether the whether the fluid's being used or not, it still will go bad over time. Mm -hmm. So yes, time is a big factor. Even though it may, even if it just set, it it's still I think it for this automatics it was five every five years right. and for the standard shifts it was every three years. So Correct. yep. Absolutely. There's according to GM there's your guidelines. Yeah, that's your maintenance schedule. So Right. But I have a lot of guys that, that track the cars and they they go out and buy the high performance brake fluid with a higher boiling point and I flush them anyway. So they can take them to the track. So All right. Thanks for the question or questions. He's yes. snuck in two there. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> we got a lot of weight. I, it's pretty sneaky how he did that. Yeah. All right. Chuck doesn't know how this works yet. One a week. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Orlando sent this in. Hey, Rick, it's Orlando from Miami. Hey, what's up, Miami? Love your shows. I watch every single one of them. I got a question for you for your Tech Tuesday program that you're on right now. C8 owner, I finally got mine. It's a 1LT. Congratulations. My question is, can I order the FE3 shocks from a Z51 package and swap them out and add springs in the new shocks and blah, blah, blah. Well, avoid the warranty is the, is the question. And the answer is yes. yes. Don't, don't, don't be start messing. Start, you, you get into this kind of stuff. There's a lot of aftermarket stuff that you can do. But as soon as you get into this, it is game over on the warranty and I'll talk about one situation that you guys have referenced to hey what's that car in the background when you and Chuck are standing out in the shop this guy and you know who I'm going with this mm -hmm. this guy's added a bunch of aftermarket stuff to his car his engine is now shot 
yep which is a result of that so we're not sure where it went bad and what he had put on there so you put yourself at risk on that when you guys buy a new car there's an extra form you have to sign now that says if you add any aftermarket stuff to the car um, you know stuff like that there's going to be electronic components uh, shocks stuff with the engine uh, then your warranty is going to be void so you got to be very very cautious in what you're putting on there exhausts and things like that air boxes that's fine but as soon as you start getting into programming and tuning and cams it would be nice to enhance the performance on that but I would say just stick with what you got because unless you got a deep pocket man because you could find yourself in a situation that you're, you're paying for a lot more than what you anticipated if something goes bad because now you're altering the vehicle from what it was actually built to be so, yes. I mean, you're trying to make a Z51 that's not a Z51, you know what I mean? So Yes. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to get on a big tangent there. No, you're fine. You're absolutely correct. Okay, sir. All right, this one comes from Eric. He says, my shocks are leaking, and I was giving a $4,000 estimate to replace all on a 2004 Z5 commemorative edition convertible with selective ride control. Is that right? That, about, about is that, that yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is, yeah, those shocks are way expensive because of the magnetic ride selective control. They're some of the most expensive shocks out there. So, wow. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at a $4,000 estimate, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Does he got any more in there? He brought uh, a nice little novel. Okay, so just make sure we address that. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Well, he, uh, he, he, I guess he said he put different shocks on and was, oh. yeah, this is the gentleman to put different shocks on and read on the Corvette for him about bypassing or doing away with the programming that I don't know about that's all in the aftermarket world which unfortunately I'm not allowed to participate in right yeah I mean you're beyond warranty I don't know for but now yes. it's just a matter of is that going to perform the way that you want to or is it are you writing checks every time you go into the service department correct uh, here's one from Tim old vinegar hey man what's going on thanks for being here on the channel uh, what does Z mode button do on the C8 Z51 package uh, he didn't get his 2020 he got moved to 2021 um, he goes I hear a lot it's kind of a double question here because he I hear a lot of comments that the Z51 is a waste unless I'm going to track the car what's your take on that I'm not going to go into in depth on that because I'm going to share with you what my spec is you know, and I feel weird. The show's went a lot longer than I wanted to. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, but I do enjoy talking with you. Uh, a lot of people, hey, what's your spec? What's your spec? Go through what you're going to order. And I don't want to be one of those arrogant YouTubers. Oh, look what I got. And look what I bought. And this is 25 years in the making for me. This is a big deal. Uh, very well thought out. Justified in every option that I'm choosing. Uh, trying to get one additional option that I can afford. Uh, taking it from a real guy perspective so you guys can relate to that you know when you start throwing out there hey I got a three hundred thousand dollar car hey that's enjoyable to watch those guys that buy all those expensive cars but you and I can't do that so who cares man give me something that I can relate to and that's real so I don't want to go into a big thing about C51 versus regular Stingray for C8 because I do have an opinion on that um, and part of what they're saying is true um, you look at 2021 Z50, if you get Z51, you guys know when you're ordering the car with me, I tell you, please get the magnetic ride control. A lot of people think that if you get Z51, oh, I get magnetic ride. No. It's a, so by you take, get Z51 and you get the magnetic ride, it's an $8,000 package. Are you going to use $8,000 worth of that feature, which is a great performance feature and bigger brakes and cooling and all that, different tires? Are you going to use that? Or can you take that $8,000 and adequate it to something else, which we'll talk about in my spec. Okay, so anyways, the Z mode, I think, is one of the neatest features on C8, right up on the steering wheel. You set that up in the Driver Information Center, it's going to change things like your powertrain, your throttle progression, your suspension, your steering feel, your exhaust sound. So rather than turning your dial, you set that up and then you apply your changes and you just push that button on the steering wheel. So for whatever, you know, whatever situation that may be, um, maybe it's uh, on track, maybe it's going through the mountains and you want the steering to be a little bit tighter but you want suspension to still be soft, but you want exhaust to be loud. You control all that, that independency, that flexibility makes it fun to drive and to own Corvette. Sorry. I, I mean, I start talking, I just can't. No, I'm sorry, I, I agree. This, this, that, that's, that, was a fun, that was a fun question. The, yeah, the Z-Mode is a personalized option for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I should have just said what he said. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you take that one next time. Yeah, you know okay. that's going to come up again. <laughs> All right, what do you got? Okay, the last one I got is from Joseph. He's like, loving the daily vlog. Hope you can keep them coming. Any chance you can talk about the Bowling Green tomorrow on one of your upcoming vlogs regarding the build shifts? Did they start the second shift work schedule? five six days a week are there any real information on what's going on bowling green any real info would help us order customers that have been waiting waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> and waiting yeah we're really not going to go into detail on that some of the, i do know some of the information on that and for some reason it's very sensitive and until it actually happens gm doesn't want you talking about that but uh coming soon things you're going to get. We shared that stuff with Tadge just the other day in case you didn't see that video. Link down below in the description or hit the videos tab. You'll see a picture of Tadge. Watch that. He gives you really good feel, real good positive that, hey, they're ready to go. This year has been difficult. It's been a hiccup. Not what anybody anticipated, but they are ready to go and they're ready to move forward fast and furious. So uh, it's going to get better. It really is. So hang in. I don't think there's anybody out there can't wait for 2020 to be over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, right on. All right. Okay, so, okay, so we got one more. All right. Yeah. This is Reggie. I'm a new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for that support. Really means a lot. We've got some big plans for the channel and working on some other programs behind the scenes that we can't wait to tell you guys about. Uh, here's something for you and Chuck. I've learned a lot from you guys. Got a 17 Z51 Stingray and I've had for about a year. For instance, when I'm sitting at a light, I'll put the car in manual and when I take off and shift into second, the car seems to lose all power but it comes back when I go into third gear. Am I doing something wrong? The dealer says, I'm not doing anything anything wrong. So don't really know if he's got an automatic or a manual transmission. It sounds like because he puts it in manual. Sounds I'm like an automatic. It's an, it's an automatic. So um, I don't think you're doing anything wrong either. Maybe maybe you're shifting too soon, possibly, and you've, you've got a little hiccup in between first and second. Don't be afraid to wind up that first gear. Right. I mean, Seriously, get that first gear up, you know, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, not a problem, boom, jumping into second. I mean, the computer has a, a sense of the shift is coming and you'll feel it and you're not gonna hurt the car. Uh, if you're shifting way too soon, or if, uh, if it's a situation where you can't shift, it's gonna tell you on the, on the system, uh, shift denied. So right. it's not gonna let you get into, you can't be uh, giving it a scenario. You can't be doing 100 and go bam, 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 and shift down to one. It won't no. let you, shift denied. So you might be shifting just a little bit too soon in your one to two transition is the only thing. That's the I only thing think, I can think of. I can think yeah, of. Well, you know, okay. wind it out 2,500, 3,000 in that first gear. Yeah. And then in second, and then in third. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing with the guys who actually had the manual transmission, we would tell you, uh, which is not no longer the case for C8, but for C7, if you had a manual transmission, guys would start going and they would get caught in that skip shift. And they were like, oh, it's one to four. And if they didn't see the thing on the dash, they're like, oh my gosh, I go one and it won't let me go into two and it just gates me over to four. So, oh, I can't, something's wrong with my transmission. Get your first gear up, like he said, 2,500 RPMs or 25 miles an hour, and you'll watch it a real smooth transition. And you can get it much faster than that, as we just said, and you're not gonna hurt the car. Right. Are you getting interrupted? No, I, I, I got a text. Dr. Metz. <laughs> Dr. Metz, Dr. Metz, oil change on aisle four. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week, you guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, sorry, a little longer than uh, we expected. Hopefully, we answer some questions for you guys that is going to help you with your Corvette ownership. Uh, continue to send those in if you would, please. Uh, we do appreciate the time to, to break away and just share time together and share it with you and, and try to keep you guys pointed uh, in, in the right direction with your, your Corvette ownership. All right, man. Uh, and, oh yeah, we're, we're not done. Uh, we're gonna feature some great looking cars. <laughs> we call this your beautiful rides. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I got a very special phone call that warms my heart hearing the feedback from a good friend and a good customer that I want you guys to hear. Raw call tomorrow on the channel. Subscribe, like, and comment.
until you discover it is within each other to forgive and make amends. If I had known then, or what I know now, I wouldn't have said what I said. I took the long road, thought I'd be better on my own. Sometimes what's right is wrong instead. Cause I Stand back, you are the one. 